Hi everyone, and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I'm Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok. And today is episode two of our 2024 podcast series. It's a gray, rainy, cozy day outside and inside. Yes, cozy inside, rainy outside. <laughs> and I wanted to give you an update on all of my projects that I've been working on. I don't have any FOs today, just some updates on my whips and a small new cast on that I don't think you'll be surprised by at all. Um, so let's get into it. I'm going to open up my journal here because I kind of wanted to go in order of like what my plans were for this week. I thought this might be a fun way to like pace out the podcast, especially if I don't have a finished object. So we're going to start with here. Let me just give you, let me see if you can see this. Here's the week that I'm looking at. So I know that was like a very quick view, but I'm gonna walk you through it. And we're gonna start with my Cal cardigan. <laughs> So I had a couple goals. I broke it down into chunks. Um, and this is, by the way, my like weekly snapshot page where I just plan out like for each week, what are the like little chunks of knitting that I want to get done each week. So for my Cal cardigan, let me pull it up for you and give you the specs first. Again, this is the Cal Cardigan by Claire Jackson. She's at Perfectly Knotted on Instagram. And the yarn that I'm using for this, if I have a full skein, I'm just gonna show you a full skein. <laughs> the yarn that I'm using for this is Bella Filato Studio. The colorway is called Cozy Flannel, and it's in her Bella Worsted Base, which is a 100% superwash merino. And you can see it's this pink magenta with dark speckles in it. I think it's really lovely. I think it really fits the name Cozy Flannel. And I'm just really hoping, you know, when it's all knit up, it is kind of ha gonna have that like flannel vibe. So you can see what it looks like in the back panel. Isn't that, it looks great. The color looks really great. Um, okay. The size that I'm making in this, just in case anybody needs more of the specs, I'm knitting the size 4, um, and I'm knitting it on 5 millimeter needles. The sizes, I talked about this last week, in the pattern are all color coordinated. Each size has its own color, so when you're reading the pattern and it says like knit X number of rows, X number of stitches, and all the sizes are laid out, each size is a different color. So size 4 corresponds to purple. And I started this on January 4th. So that's all of the main specs on this. In terms of my goal for this last week, I should say today is Sunday, by the way, January 21st. And I like to plan my goals out Monday through Sunday. So technically I have until the end of today to finish this goal, but it's easier for me to film this podcast kind of morning time on Sunday. And I did finish one of these goals last Sunday, but we're going to talk about it today. These are all just little nitpicky things that you probably don't really care about, but I'm going to tell you about anyways. <laughs> okay, my goals for the Cal Cardigan for this week were to um, knit the front left panel, knit the front right panel, and knit the back panel. I knit the front left panel last Sunday. So technically finished that last week, but you haven't seen it. I knit the front right panel this week and I'm partway through knitting the back panel. So I'm gonna kinda see. The back panel is still on the needles, but I don't think that's gonna be an issue. I'm not gonna like pull it out or anything of the needles. I kinda just wanna show you 
the front, which I have on stretchy cords, and I can... I put it on stretchy cords and then I'm using a cable lock from Twice Shared Sheep to like make sure the cords don't come off. So we can stretch this out as much as we need to. There we go. Okay, so if you um, watched last week's video, you'll know that we placed these progress keepers from where I was last week. This is a hot air balloon. This is a little mermaid tail. I called it a mermaid tail, and then I was like, well, it could be a whale tail, some sort of tail. Um, and these are, you know, at the same point. So I made a decent amount of progress. I think this is like 40 rows on each of the front panels, and it's looking great. So at this point, I should be, you know, ready to join the front panel to the back panel to make the sleeve holes. I'm definitely going to, well, I need to finish the back panel first. We'll just say that. And then I need to like really make sure I'm good with the armhole depth. And if I need to go back and knit, you know, a few more rounds, maybe like four or five more rounds on each of the sections, I want to make sure that I do that just to make sure that I'm happy with the armhole depth. So I'm not... Uh, worried about needing to go back and add more. So that's the the front panel and then oh my gosh <laughs> there, oh that's yarn management okay and then let me show you the back panel here. I did put a progress keeper on here. Um, you didn't see me do that. I did it after the fact because I was like, oh, well, now I'm on the back panel, so I might as well put a progress keeper here as well. It's a little candy. I don't think you can see that at all. It's a little candy. Um, and I have done some of it. My row counter is telling me that I have one, 12 more rows to go. So I think if I focus on this for the rest of the day, I can definitely get that done. Um, I can measure out and see how good we are with the armhole depth and figure out where we wanna go from there. But I'm really happy with the progress that I'm making on this project. Um, since this is on five millimeter needles, worsted weight, it does feel like it moves really quickly and it is stockinette. Now it is flat stockinette, so it's knit one row, purl one row, purl one row, but it does, especially compared to like my other project, um, main project on the needles, which is my Ingrid sweater, you know, it feels like way simpler knitting, right? It's just plain stockinette instead of anything textured. And because again, it's five millimeter, millimeter needles, I'm <laughs> really like trying to speak faster than my words are coming out today. Um, I feel like it's moving really fast and I'm seeing a lot of progress on it, which is nice. I am like really also still in the mood of like wanting to cast on more projects, but I feel like, you know, if I put in a decent amount of effort on this each week, this will probably be my next knit that will be finished. So we'll see. So that's the update on my cardigan. Okay, let me actually, Let's move the progress keepers now so that I don't forget to do this later, okay? Um, and I wanna do this with you on the podcast because otherwise I really do think I'm going to forget. So here's my uh, one of the front panels with my hot air balloon. Moving this down, okay, check. My other front panel has my mermaid tail, whale tail. Okay, move that down. I like having one on each section too because I'm like considering them as different sections. It's easier to think about them that way um, in my like journal and just easier to like break them up. So like when I finish one section, I do feel accomplished even though Maybe it's not like a lot of knitting, if that makes sense. Okay, and then I'm moving my candy for the back panel down here. 
At some point when we join everything in the round, I'll probably just move to one progress keeper, but all right, now we've got all three. Okay. So again, that's my progress on my Cal cardigan. Oh, and while I was, I was thinking about this before I started the podcast, um, I mentioned briefly my row counter. This is from Twice Sheared Sheep. I feel like I show these, they're on every project, I show them every week, but I rarely talk about them. I have had comments in the past of people asking me to share how I use them. I feel like I talk about it a lot on Instagram, but um, are you interested in like a little how-to video? It would be short, sweet, and to the point on how I use a chain row counter like this. If you are, please let me know in the comments down below. I will say I am an affiliate for Twice Sheared Sheep, which is where this row counter is from. This one specifically I purchased, but I have had many gifted to me in the past. Um, I will say <laughs> I've had many gifted. I have purchased many. I My knitting life like totally changed when I started using these. Um, it's like one of the knitting tools that I don't think I could knit without at this point, so Do with that as you will Okay, so that was the Cal cardigan. Let's move on the next um, goal that I had for this week in my knitting journal Was the Ingrid sweater the back chart? <laughs> Let me give you the stats. This is my Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Okay, the yarn that I'm using for this is the Treehouse Knits. It's her Dove DK base in the colorway Harvest Moon. And again, it's a 100% superwash merino wool. I talked about this last week. This is one of the softest yarns. That I have used in a long time. I use a lot of hand dyed uh, yarn in general and I don't know where Lauren from Treehouse Knits gets this base but it's so good. Look at like the twist on this yarn. It's so different from a lot of the other bases that I have seen and used so I love it. Um, and it's this like purpley gray gray undertones but definitely still purple colored yarn which is like one of my favorite colors when when I think like what kind of purple yarn do I want to use it's definitely like a purple yarn with a gray undertone to it um okay the size that I'm knitting I'm knitting the size extra large it's the fifth size in the pattern and it's supposed to correspond to a 50.5 inch finished bust um, I did change the needle sizes that I'm using, so I'm doing a 4.5 millimeter on the body, a 4 millimeter on the body ribbing, and then I'll do a 3.5 millimeter on the neck ribbing. Um, the pattern gauge is 20 stitches for their stitch gauge. My gauge when I swatched this was 20 stitches as well. Um, I'll t chat about it a little bit more later, but I was feeling like this back panel was like exceptionally large but I did measure my gauge again at this point and I'm still hitting 20 stitches so I feel like I'm okay um, and I started this project on January 12th so I knew that this goal was like a lofty goal to attempt to finish the whole back panel of it this week um, and that's okay like sometimes I put these goals down and sometimes I'll say like half of the back panel or like whatever um, it doesn't really matter like if I don't finish the back panel it's just gonna go to the next week and maybe next week I will finish it but here's my progress keeper from last week look how much progress I've made I did the whole so there's an eyelet row here with some pearl bumps, the cross hatching like faux cable section, there's another eyelet row, and now I'm on the 2x2 two two rib section. And again, according to my row counter, I only have uh, six rows of this uh, one by or 2x2 two two rib section left. And then let me tell you, I'm really close 
to being done with this section. Yeah, actually, so after I finish these last six rows, there's one more eyelet round and a pearl round. So I really have like eight rows left um, on this back section. I'm really close. I think I probably, I don't know. We'll have to see what I'm in the mood for. I was gonna say, I think I'll probably focus on my cow cardigan later today, but um, I may be able to finish both later today. I don't know, um, but isn't it looking so good? Okay, let me show you. <laughs> You can probably tell the size of this just looks massive, doesn't it? So this is the back panel, but look how far like out the side of this goes. It definitely goes like down my arm. And I do think it is like the correct size. It's just larger than like anything that I have knit before, if that makes sense. I guess I haven't knit anything that's like as oversized as this, but that is the goal. That is the look that I'm going for. I want it to be a little bit oversized. So, and I think it does look um, proportional to how the photo looks on Petite Knit, so. I've been wanting, I know I talked about this last time, I've been wanting to knit this pattern for so long. It came out in 2022, we're now in 2024, obviously, and so I'm just like really happy that I finally cast it on and it's it's going, it's going well. And I've made some really good progress uh, this week. So let's move my little stitch marker, progress keeper. And I will say, I did change the eyelet rows. I wasn't like super into the way that that round was written, the instructions. And so I just changed it to uh, ways that I've knit eyelet rows in the past where you do a yarn over and then a knit two together. And I think it looks exactly the same and it gives the same effect. I don't think it really changed much in the pattern. So um, if that's how you also like to knit eyelets is a yarn over and a knit two together, then I say go for it, because that's what I did. <laughs> um, okay, so then my goal for this, for up the upcoming week, if I don't finish the back panel um, at the end of today, then my goal will be to finish the back panel. And then my next goal will be the left shoulder. I don't know, I'll have to like read through the pattern a little bit more in depth to see if I really think I can get through the left shoulder and the right shoulder in one week. Um, we'll see, but that's kind of next up on the list for what this is going to be knit, so. Yay! Okay, that yarn just went halfway across my bed. <laughs> um, okay, next up on the list... ...was Cats on My Cove sweater. And I have not done that yet, and I don't think I'm going to do that today. So that'll likely get moved to next week. I also think I have more yarn arriving next week for a sweater that I would like to cast on, so we'll see. I'm, I'm still in this, like, mood of wanting to cast on sweaters, but I'm also restraining myself because I still have that, like, monogamous knitting mindset where I really only want to knit one sweater at a time. It's like this this war of like the two angels or the angel and the devil on my shoulder, even though like this is definitely not like a good or bad scenario. <laughs> but it's a war in my head of like what I want to do and what I should do. I guess less of like what I want to do and what I should do and like one side of what I want to do and the other side of what I want to do because I want to do both, but they are opposites. Anyways, did not cast on the Cove sweater. That'll probably get moved to next week. The next thing on the list was my Sweet Shop blanket. Um, I said to maybe knit two or three of the pink squares, and this also did not happen. I have not... Um, I did not knit any more on my Sweet Shop blanket. I did, I don't know if I, sh I can't remember if I showed this last time, but I did wind up four, 
four of the pairs. So I've got eight minis in here. These are going to be the next four colorways that I work on. Um, so I'm ready to go. I just need to, I just need to cast one on. I don't know. This is a really nice project to take if um, we're like going to visit Joel's parents. It's like a 30, 40 minute drive from our house. So um, I can like work on it in the car. It's easy to work on at their house. But when I'm home, I do mostly want to work on like more complicated projects or like I said like really make progress on my cow cardigan even though that's simpler so I don't know I kind of just need to be in the mood to want to work on this one so that did not get completed this week and then the last thing on the list this was a long list this week to be honest I think I've been really like really ambitious this month in January so far and I think that's probably par for the course like new year you're so excited you want to do all the things right at the start of the year so definitely I've had that energy the last couple of weeks um, but the last thing on the list was to cast on another Oslo hat and I did do this <laughs> a ton of progress but I did cast it on and here's what it is what it looks like so I don't even think this needs an introduction but this is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit I knit eight of these last year alone and uh, a few more the year before that so I think my count is definitely above 10 and the yarn that I'm using for this is Paisley Knits this colorway is Poseidon this was from her Greek Gods collection and I cut up the label to put in my journal Journal. so I'll just show you here it's on her Krabby DK base um, and it's a 100% superwash merino yarn so something different about this Oslo hat is I am knitting it on a DK weight yarn versus normally I knit it on uh, fingering weight and I'll hold two strands together so what I want to be uh, what I want to like watch out for as I'm knitting this is I just want to make sure that the density of the fabric is good. If the fabric is feeling too loose and too stretchy, then the hat itself is going to sag. I know this very well because the first hat uh, that I knit on DK weight yarn instead of fingering held double, I knit for my husband and the integrity of that hat just the structural integrity of it is so bad and it kind of makes me cringe every time I look at it every time he wears it but at the same time when he doesn't wear it I'm like you're not wearing your hat and he like asks for a second one and I'm like you don't even wear the first one and then he'll like wear it for a couple days <laughs> it's so bad anyway this one is not for my husband this is for a friend um and yeah again I don't have too much knit yet to really tell it kind of feels like it's not as thick and as dense as it needs to be I might need to go down a needle size I am knitting this on 3.75 millimeter needles the pattern technically calls for 3.5 millimeter but I'm a tighter knitter so I usually have to go up a needle size anyways but if I feel like this gauge is going to be too open, um, I might rip it out, start over, go down to a 3.5, and add 4 to 8 more stitches just to make sure the circumference is going to be good for a men's size hat. Okay. Um, so that's all I really think I need to say about this for now. I will say... <laughs> I got um, some fun new tools in the mail this week that I ordered from Twice Year Cheap. This seems like a whole episode <laughs> um, where I've mentioned them like three times now. But I wanted to share because I'm really excited about these new tools. And yesterday, Saturday, January 20th, I went to Disneyland and I took this project with me to knit on while I was there and one of the new tools that I got is this yarn to go carousel and there's two functions on this that I'm really excited about and I have now tested both of them not extensively just a little bit because I've only had this for like two days now um, but I just wanted to share because I'm really excited about it so the first functionality is you can 
can get a wrist strap with it. I, of course, got the purple one. So you can hang this on your wrist. The yarn uh, will spin. It's got a, you know, spinny mechanism. And so as you're knitting and, you know, you can be walking around at Disneyland or wherever you're going, and the yarn seamlessly comes off of this. Isn't that really cool? And then the other functionality of this, and I'm actually going to turn the camera for a second so you can see. Okay, I think you can see that, right? Zoom in a little bit. Um, it also has a lazy Susan function on the bottom. So you can set it on, I've only tested this on a flat surface, I've only tested this on my desk so far. I want to test it like on my bed and on the couch and like other places that I normally knit. But you can put this on like a desk or a table. And I would recommend taking the, sh the wrist strap off if you're going to do this stationary. But as you're knitting, you can just pull it like this and it rotates and it keeps your yarn it keeps your yarn ball stationary, so it's not flopping all around, falling on the ground, <laughs> knocking over your coffee, you know, the, the types of things that normally happen when your yarn ball is not stationary, which I absolutely love. Okay, I realized I unplugged my microphone for that uh, tabletop demonstration, so I'm sorry if it, the sound was not as great for that minute. Um, yeah, let me just show you really quickly too, just like how it works. Um, whoop. We'll do a little backwards and then forwards. So when you, when you receive it in the mail, it comes in three separate parts. The base, the vertical piece, <laughs> and the handle, which actually is sold separately. Um, but if you ever want to, you know, walk around with it, you kind of need the wrist strap. And the base is actually two separate parts with a magnet. So, magnet together. And you want to stick the vertical piece. You see that slot there? You stick that through. So it's sticking up. And then you put the bottom piece onto the base, magnet them together, and then you can put your yarn ball on, so your cake. So kind of just stick my finger in, <laughs> make sure I can go all the way through. There it is. I put my finger at the top and I push the yarn onto the vertical piece. I try to like grab the vertical piece, the top of it here, you can't really see it, and then push this down. So you are kind of like stretching out the middle of your cake. I haven't gotten down to the middle yet while using this to see if things get messed up, but I think it's okay. And then you've got your yarn stabilized on the carousel. You can clip the wrist strap on and you're mobile, baby. You can go anywhere. You can put it on a desk, a table, take it to the brewery, the winery, take it to the park, put it on you know, the picnic bench table and do what you will with this. So I have a like little snippet of a clip of me um, knitting in front of the castle at Disneyland yesterday. Um, and it was so much fun. <laughs> we did film this literally right before it started pouring. Um, and thank you to my brother for being a really great videographer. Um, but I'm really excited to like test that out a little bit more um, once I kind of feel better using it. Not that I don't feel good now, but I just want to have more hours of using it under my belt. Um, I will probably do like a how-to video using it. And I will say also, I got a couple other tools that I haven't tried out yet. Twice Shared Sheep had a big like January collection with a bunch of new items and 
uh, I hadn't tried any of them yet, so I purchased uh, most of them. But a couple of the others that I was really excited about were these tin dividers. Um, so there's a small version, they're clear, and a large version to fit in both their small and large tins. So I'm excited to test these out. I got their cat stitch markers. Those are super cute. And then they got a new type of um, row counter. It's called the Work Until Measuring Tape. And it's got the row counter, like, stitch marker end that you put on your work. And then it's literally a measuring tape. And you can um, mark the length that you want to work until, like if your pattern says, you know, work until your knit measures four inches. You can slide this to the four inches, put this on your work uh, in any spot, you can, and when you get to it, you really just slip it like a normal stitch marker. And then once your work gets to that point, you know that you have hit four inches. It's like brilliant. So I got two of them, I figured, I probably need one for every project also like the other row counter so I'm really excited to test these out and I will let you know how I like them once I have worked with them. That was my little impromptu acquisition section. I will say uh, again I'm an affiliate with Twice Sheared Sheep so if you're interested in trying out any of these products for yourself you can click the link that's in the description box down below. As an affiliate um, it's no extra cost to you but it does help me out with a small commission if you purchase through my link. So thank you if you uh, decide to do that. I really appreciate it. Same with all of my links that are down there. My All of my partnerships and affiliates are always linked in the description box down below. Okay, so that's really it for today's progress update. Um, I kind of told you what the plan is for this week going forward. Really going to focus on the Cal Cardigan and the Ingrid sweater. I may cast on another new sweater. I've got two in mind, the Cove that we talked about, and I think I'm getting my yarn for the Farnham sweater. Um, I don't remember if I showed you the yarn that was coming, but I ordered from Dusty Yarn Co. in her alpaca sport base, and the main color is going to be Shook, which is this gorgeous purple, and the contrast color stripes are going to be in Baby Beach, which is like a neutral cream color. So I'm so excited for that yarn to come. I love all of uh, Dusty Yarn Co's colorways. She is the same dyer of this uh, Bougainvillea that I'm going to use for my Cove sweater. So I'm just desperate to get all of that onto the needles. But that is where we're at for today. I let my coffee get cold while I was chatting to you, but I think it was worth it. So, just looking around to make sure I have nothing else. <laughs> I feel like these episodes are long, but I also like get in the groove and I really like um, talking to you about knitting and yarn, and so I like want to find more things to talk to you about, but that's it. I don't have anything else. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Um, go follow me over on Instagram at Knit California, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!